naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Welcome to With Insights Radio, Iggy Garcia Live, the Naked Shaman. That is me. I'm here live in my studio here on, well, I can't tell you where I'm at. It's a secret location. That I would give it away. That, would mean, that wouldn't be any fun. But I just want to say hi to everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome um, everybody who's here. I see Sue's on there, Angel's on there. People are popping in slowly but surely. Uh, we do have a call-in number for those of you who want to call in. That call-in number is... 646-595-3440. You're more than welcome to call in and say hello and give um, your name or whatever's on your mind, whatever's happening, whatever's going on. I invite you to call in and share your thoughts. I'll call in a little bit later for a reading. We'll do reading. We'll do a little meditation. But I'll tell you one thing. Being here in this studio is not that cool. It's like really hot. It's like there's no heat going on. I mean, it's warm in here. But we'll do okay. We'll be all right. But uh, you know, it's part of being summer. You know, we 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 complain about how hot it is, and then and then when it's winter, we complain about how cold it is. So we have to make up our mind. What's it going to be? Are we going to complain? Are we just going to do with it, enjoy it, be part of it, embrace it, love it? And here we go. I'm going to light a candle like we always do on our show. This is our remembrance candle for all those who have passed, transitioned um, just recently or a long time ago to our family members and um, for those who you know, we miss and love. And for our ancestors, we give thanks to our ancestors to support us and be with us and help us and, and walk with us and help us on this journey that we call life. Uh, one day we'll join them, one day we'll be with them, one day we will walk side by side with our ancestors back in that place we call home. This is just a reflection of where our home really is. So hopefully we all can come a piece of that. So I wanna take a few moments just to remember, we had some people who lost family members today. Um, some people who lost uh, you know, loved ones today. So I wanna give a tribute to them and recognize them and say to them, you know, hey, I'm thinking about you. We're sending prayers and vibrations your way, that way they're not forgotten we don't want to forget anybody in this path in this thing we call life and so i want to take a few minutes now that we lit the candle and give remembrance to all those who we've lost all those who are not well all those who are sick all those who need some prayers and some energy and some love sent their way i know i need it and everybody needs it we're going through a rough time a rat patch at this moment and you know and i'm really sorry or that you lost your your brother we'll keep him in our thoughts and prayers as well uh, it's it's always good to remember people you know even when people are like not necessarily good with you we have to understand that they're human too you know and they go through they go through their moments and their processes and um, we don't know why people will act the way they do and why they behave the way they do it just just happens sometimes and and we can't really always put a finger on it and sometimes it just it's just we're just supposed to do it we're just supposed to experience and there's my dad hey right, puppy how you doing he's watching from peru that's awesome that's pretty cool it's nice to know that the internet works that far but uh, yeah you know i want to remember you know the people that are in our lives the people who love us the people who are i see my sister rose is on there too that's cool that's awesome I look up from time to time and I see and I see Adriana's there. Hi, Adriana. Welcome. So I want to say hi to everybody. I want to say hi to everybody. So if I forget you, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm just kind of trying to get into the frame of mind of doing the show. So, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about what it means to um, experience time and experience illusions and experience all the things that we consider 
uh, normal. You know, time is a normal thing. Time is <laughs> time is one of those things that um, you know, we we have, it's a unit of measure, a way we can calculate and um, experience things. I'm gonna push a movie that I would recommend that you watch. It's called um, uh, Interstellar. It's a fabulous movie. It's an awesome. I, th I think I'm gonna see if I can find it today and watch it tonight because it takes you on this journey on this amazing journey of um, of experiencing life in a way that you just never know how it's going to play out you know for those of you who've seen the movie and it's really not a spoiler alert because it's been out for several years so I'm not gonna you're not gonna I'm not giving away anything so I'm gonna take a little sip of water here so I'm gonna tell you Interstellar is basically it's about multiple existences at the same time it's actually being in in different parts of the universe and different parts of uh, reality and um, and not really necessarily changing in our changing in that particular moment the one main character is uh, Matthew McConaughey he's he's traveling into space he's on this mission and in the beginning of the movie his daughter is thinking she's talking to a ghost inside her uh, her um, her home and obviously the earth has gone through some transformation at this time there's some things that have happened and some things that uh, have changed the reality of the existence how it is and so this whole time Matthew McConaughey is, is trying to communicate to his daughter and he's trying to communicate with his daughter in ways she would understand and so this is what's really cool about the topic we're going to be talking about today is that this whole time it took a while for his daughter to actually figure out what was happening um, at first he was in the he was in the present moment when that was occurring so he wasn't necessarily at the actual moment when the things were happening but you know as the movie unfolds you start to understand that you know time is really illusionary it's not real so they they went to this one planet you know temporarily to get some some something off a ship I believe that something happened and then the time, the way, the way time moved on the planet versus being in space is, if they were there longer than, I believe, seven minutes or something like that, that was the equivalent to being 25 years in space. And so the one character, I think, uh, Don Cheadle was up in space, and he, he waited, he waited the 25 years, and they showed up, they came back. For them, it was like, you know, it was like seven minutes. But that's the illusion of time, what I'm talking about. This is, this is... This is scientifically proven. It's when we travel uh, through space, when we travel through the speed of light, our physical body is moving, you know, into this this other arena of time, as the others are moving on a slower pace. So we could actually, I could actually time travel right now to some degree. It's called time traveling, but it's called forward time traveling. So it's really not reverse time traveling, except for the person who's physically in the spaceship or the capsule. So I would to travel, if I was to travel, speed of light, everybody's still on earth, and then come back. The reality is that nobody will, everybody who I've known will no longer be there. They would be gone. They will, don't want to exist anymore. They will not, they, they would just, I would outlive them just in that short moment of time that I traveled and came back. That's why they say time's an illusion, because time is, you know, there's linear time and there's non-linear time. Um, you know, we talk about how two things, could, two objects could be in the same place at the same time. For example, in the movie Interstellar, they, there was a time where uh, Matthew McConaughey was in the present moment, and then his future version was in, in the future trying to communicate to himself, which I found really fascinating. And, you know, that movie moved me. And that movie, that movie changed the way I think about, you know, things. And yeah, it's science fiction. Yeah, and, and it's, there's, there's science behind it, which is really cool. Because as much as science and as much as, you know, scientists want to put their thumbprint or their name on things, they can't. They can't. They can only theorize, make a theory about what actually happens. Because they can't really say that somebody has already done that. So it's all theories. So the, the best way they can actually define something or discover something is looking through particles and matters where they send, you know, protons through the proton accelerator and come around and then 
two protons appear in the same place, you know, cause, which we know as quantum physics. You know, we, we talk about that. So what is, what is this thing that we call a parallel universe? What is that? Well, you got to understand, number one, we got to understand the word. Okay, we have to understand the word is parallel. Parallel is two things running side by side, right? It parallels each other's, okay? So imagine two roads, you know, and you're driving on both roads. You know, there's a road, someone is driving on the other road, and you're on the other road. And as you're both driving on these roads, you're both going, maybe not the same speed, but you're going the same direction, but you're going to some place in that direction, okay? At any moment that you veer off into that other version, okay, then you're in the other parallel. But here's the thing. When we talk about parallel universes, we talk about how how human beings, how us, I know how you, how us, how we move, okay, how we move into the existences that we are. Now, you have to kind of use your imagination here. You have to kind of go with me on this trip because for a lot of people, it's very difficult to actually picture what a parallel universe looks like. We have this illusion that a parallel universe is like a comic book uh, a scenario, which to some degree it is. You know, remember, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that we think about, talk about, you know, has other people have talked about it, have done it. Now, there's some things that you will draw from the universe that haven't been drawn from in a long time. And that's good. That's normal. All right. So in the multiple universe, the multiple universe, the multiverse, the universe is always expanding and still expanding and it, it will expand it will never stop expanding okay that's what science can't put their finger on they figure when something explodes we have the big bang you know that their theory is well it should explode and implode, come back in right implode into itself but it hasn't it's still expanding it's still creating universes it's still creating things my theory is that we're creating alongside that creation that we're actually creating all these things now you have to really really think about it you know I posted something the other day well actually today the world is as you dream it okay and and this is uh, a Colombian tribe Amazonian uh, tribe that you know pretty much it means all our relations okay and it also means as we create we get okay so as we create our universes these universes we have multiple opportunities to walk into different scenarios okay walk into into these places where we actually can go into um and we can change reality for how we look at it now sometimes it's very subtle and something is very uh, unnoticeable sometimes it just happens but we're constantly merging into different versions of ourselves different uh realities and existence of ourselves and it's something that you know the mind sometimes can't fathom the mind can't go Oh yeah, I just saw that. I just know. But there is time where you notice something where you felt like you were in one place and then all of a sudden you're someplace else. Have you ever had that moment where you're just kind of like, like a deja vu or maybe like a, not even a deja vu. It's more like, I can't even use the word. I can't remember the word, but where you're just kind of like, well, did I, did I just do that? And what, what just happened? You ever have that? I've had those. I've had those moments where you're just like, how did I get here? How did I expand here? Now, in this big universe that we're here okay we have this there is a central there there's there's speak of how there's a central prime where there's a, a prime version of ourselves where we're actually prime but the, the the interesting thing about prime meaning first first version of who we are is who's prime you have to understand who's prime you know who's that prime you know who's that person where you know we're we're prime you know it, it's it's um you know, right now, I, I want to say this is the prime version. This is me because I can see it. I can feel it and I can touch it. I can smell it and I'm in it. But that doesn't mean that this is the prime version. This isn't, this isn't necessarily me. I mean, there are versions of us who are trying to access versions of us and trying to learn from us. And there's versions of us that will never access. There's versions of us who just stay on this line, you know. The, the Native Americans had really belief that we have a straight timeline then they we have all these splinters that break off boom 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 ch -ch -ch. you know as we break off into these worlds into these different um, scenarios okay we, we create now when you make a decision into into 
your verses. And you're right. Somebody said hiccup. I don't remember who it was. But when we move into these little hiccups where we're actually moving into our different version of ourselves, we're constantly creating. So we're constantly creating the universe. We're, when, when we're thinking, when we're creating in our mind, we're thinking these ideas about what we want to create, what we, how we want to navigate and move into this space, into this place. We're constantly making and transitioning into these, into these new existences of ourselves. Sometimes it's very subtle. Sometimes it's very, very boom, like that. So how, how do you distinguish what is real and what is not real? Because remember, in a couple shows back, I talked about, you know, us being memory sticks, where we're actually carrying the DNA, the remembering, and all the information of our ancestors, and all the remembering of, you know, the beginning of time. We carry that. That is written in our DNA. That is written in our code. I don't care what scientist tells you, whatever. You know, there's just things that science will never, ever, 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 ever prove. Okay? And that's why we create science fiction. That's why we create these re un these realities that aren't real. Because in the mind of our human mind, we create these things. Imagination is more powerful, okay, than anything. Our imagination is, is ten times stronger than anything, than anything that we can imagine. Our human mind is so fast and so quick. It's faster than this be light. I can send a thought across the universe faster than a uh, light could travel. You can too. And we do that constantly. Why do we look up to the stars? Ask yourself, why do you look up to the stars? Why do you look up to the heavens? Why do you go up there? What, what's up there? Well, there's a connection there. There's obviously a connection there because there's parts of us everywhere. Remember, you're talking about these fractals and these moments and these places where we're all, you know, pieces and parts and we haven't even been discovered yet. We haven't even been created, but yet we're still up there. There's a version of us in, in the time continuum, in this time um, circle that we are actually in reality haven't met yet. And when we get there, it's pretty exciting. All right. And then our dream time, Rosa, is, is, is a whole nother thing, you know? Some people say that our dreams are actually our realities. That it's a mirror, a reflection of who we are. But in the parallel universe, you can actually access information. You can actually access uh, yourself. You can actually access things that can help you, okay? Now, the thing is, sometimes some of us are very good at it, and some of us don't even know we're doing it, and some of us try too hard to do it, to access uh, different points of ourselves. Uh, another good movie that I, I suggest you watch, okay? The movie is called One, okay? The One, I think it's called The One. I think it's with Jet Li. Jet Li is basically trying to uh, capture all the different versions of himself, okay? And he's trying to um, eliminate them and take their essence, I guess, and create himself into this super uh, version of himself, uh, this super human, maybe? But there comes down to where there's only two left, and if believe I believe if he destroys one and, and something happens, and he becomes way too powerful for man to even control. But it's funny where our minds go and how our mind, how our mind creates and how our mind looks at things and makes things work. Because it, I find it very interesting. We are the biggest, biggest person can hold ourselves back we are I mean that's just reality we are the person who can just say hey you know what I'm not gonna do it or I'm gonna do it or one decision changes our whole existence now in another parallel universe is in different versions of ourselves there are multiple versions of us working and doing things that are you know imagine yourself being the most wealthiest person in the world and imagine yourself being the, the poorest person in the world imagine yourself going through time moving through time, accessing those pieces and parts of yourself. Wouldn't that be amazing for you to be able to just go, hey, I want to learn how to play the piano. Well, you can. Hey, I want to learn how to run a multi-million dollar company. Well, you can. Because you're already doing it. The universe is so amazing that it has already played out every possibility, infinite possibility of what you could become every possible infinite uh, existence, every possible adventure you could possibly have. The rub is, in the prime state, who we are, we're the ones that make, that's where the free will comes in, that's where the free choice comes in. We decide if we take 
that road or that information. But there are versions of us that will take that road. Okay? And when that road's filled, you know, we come in. So when you come into two places at the same time where your version here and this other version comes together, what happens? Is there like a merger? Is there quickening? Is it something where we come together? Of course, there's a collaboration. It's just like when you have spirit guides. You know, some of you talk about your spirit guides and you talk about higher self. Well, higher self is, you know, connection with higher version of who we are, ascended versions of ourselves, ascended versions of, of us that are in a different plane, a different uh, parallel, a different existence, a different part of the universe. We're actually talking to us, okay? And how do we know this? Because we, number one, we feel comfortable. Number two, it feels like something that's really, really amazing, okay? All right, so, and the thing is, when, when we had talked to ascended masters, you know, we, and a, and a different parallel universe, are an ascended master, okay? And this particular version of ourselves, we don't believe we're ascended because we don't believe we're worthy. See, there's a lot of, issues, there's a lot of reasons why we feel the way we do and why we do the things we do. It's because we access different points and we have these dreams, and these dreams that we have about being this particular person or that particular way or that particular uh, scenario we have to believe in that and you know and so belief plays a lot into how we access parallel universes how we go into parallel universes okay this has been a a, a, a theme a running theme in the dc universe and the marvel universe and comics for those of you who read comic books okay and those of you who read science fiction there are multiverses okay all right where we're all moving and we're all doing things there's versions of us that were have already who are doing some amazing thing. There's versions of us that just not doing anything. But we have access. We have this thinking. We have this knowledge. And we create this knowledge. We can grasp from this knowledge. We can, you know, take from this knowledge that we access in the universe because we are everything. We are part of everything. We are all my relations. We are every part of the the known universe. Okay, the the known universe filters through us, works through us. Now. The memories and the ideas and uh, the things that we collect on the way are the things that filter the things out. Okay, for some of us, we're like going, yeah, you know, it does. I don't, I don't relate to that. I don't understand that, you know. So we don't grab on that. We don't hand on to that. Our mind is the most powerful tool that you will ever have. Our mind is the tool that will will can create, destroy, you know, incubate, and do all kinds of amazing things. But human beings have to understand that. And sometimes we don't understand that and we don't create that because we're too busy and too fixated being in the present moment. And there's nothing wrong with being in the present moment. The present moment is important, but we can also step outside. We need to step out from time to time and look at our reality that we're creating. Is it good for us? Is it working for us? Is this reality a real thing? As we're moving through these parallel universes, we're always accessing them, constantly accessing them every single moment. You know, when you have those those daydreams, there's a person, there's a version of yourself. Who, who, how many of you talk to yourselves? And you probably, some of you raise your hand. Some of you probably go, no, no I'm talking to myself. Some of you go, yeah, I talk to myself all the time. Who are you talking to? Are you talking to you? Are you talking to inner voice self? Are you just, are you talking to the multiple verses of yourself? The multiple versions of how you can create and pull from you know we can't think of ourselves as, as this body anymore you know because we're not just body we're also really we're spirit also we're also very connected to spirit we're really connected to things seen and unseen some of you i know because i know some of you who are on here are able to access some very powerful intuition some very powerful points in time where you can actually just know things and how do you just know things how can you possibly know things because that's how we're built that's how we're made we're made to understand all these things we don't understand we're, we're just because the sheer fact that man has created boundaries for our mind okay for the mind that we have here man has created boundaries so we don't are not able to travel into those fears they they're fearful for us to travel into those mindsets they're afraid if we access the knowledge that's in our brain that's buried deep in our brain that's been suppressed that we would they couldn't control us 
You know, it's it's your mind. Your, everything begins in your mind. Okay, and your mind. You know, we don't even understand how the soul and how your spirit sits inside the body. We have theories. We have ideas. We have this. You know, these these things we call whatever we call them. You know, we can use anything label any label. But it, everything is so intricate, intricately connected. You know, imagine how the universe of your body works alone. Just your body, just your, your own human body. The blood cells, you know, the T cells, your liver, your heart, your bowels, your, your digestive system, you know, your sebaceous glands, you know, your saliva that runs, the sweat that runs off your body. How does your body know how to sweat? How does your body know how to do these things? It's because I told you guys, we're all Mother Earth. We're all humans. We're all a, a, a version of the planet presenting itself and living through and expressing itself. So in these multiple universes, there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. You know, I had a friend that were telling me that they did some work, some blood tests on some people. Again, this is documented information. My friend Jonathan, they did some blood work on a gentleman where you know they took the, the blood and the one lady they took they did they ran some energy on the blood and the blood you know actually stayed you know it, it, it the, the chi force kept the blood from you know from dying those cells from dying eventually when the the force was the chi was removed from that okay it died i'll have to bring him on the show because i found that really interesting when they were telling me about that how things happen and you know i tell you in this multiple universe there's multiple things happening. Now, how do we create? How do we all co-create in this universe, in this multiple universe? We do. We all co-create. You know, and, and I'm not saying anybody's creation is stronger or better than anybody else. But just think about all the things that we've we've created together just recently. Look at all the things that we've co-created, things that we've worked together. Now, right now, we're co-creating. You know, we're all co-creating on this show. We're all listening. We're all sharing. We're all going to draw from. Some of you are giving your opinions. Some are giving your, your thoughts. Some are agreeing, some may disagree. Doesn't matter. We're just, but we're still creating. We're still creating, and that creation is important because when we co-create, you know, we get into the space and the place we need to be. Now, in this human existence that we are, we are constantly creating. You know, there, there's been proven fact, documented fact that we can actually change the weather just by sheer thought. You don't have to do a ceremony. You don't have to chant. You don't have to just the sheer thought of what a nice day looks like is created we it's this has been proven it's also been proven that we can stop wars by the sheer thought and the belief in prayer what is that it's accessing the the universe it's accessing those parallel universes it's accessing those points in time and those things we can do it. We do it every day. And there's no reason we should stop doing it. Every day we should be creating. Every day we should be doing that. So there are versions of you who are good. And there are versions of you who are not so good. There are versions of you who are male. There are versions of you who are female. There are versions of you who are just everything. This is, may sound very sci like sci-fi. Sci but I tell you, you have feelings and you have moments where you feel like a whole different person. Like you feel like... Ooh, where did that come from? Where did that inspiration shoot from? It's because there's a version of yourself who's really connected and really doing the work and doing some amazing things. There's other versions of you who don't give a rat's nothing about doing anything. And that's because, and it all compiles into the prime version of who we are, of ourselves. The only, the only reason we feel prime is because we're in this present. I told you in the beginning of the show, we feel prime. We feel like we're one because we, we're here there is another version of ourselves actually having a different conversation. There's a different version of us talking about something completely different. You can't see it. You can't access it because, number one, sometimes your mind doesn't want to go there. Can't believe that there is anything else. That there's more than, than what's happening right now. I know that there's something happening out there. I know there's other versions. I know when I have these emotional triggers and charges... I know that there's other parts of me being accessed and other parts of me going, hey, you know what? Let's look at this differently. It's going on because, you know, when I'm in my subconscious mind, when I'm in my subconscious place, I'm sending information out to d different versions of myself, different versions of other ancestral lineages to help me and guide me through this moment. 
You know, we're just, we're the sum of everything that's come before us. You know, we're the, the, the equal of that. You know, everything that's come before us, in, you know, in, through our lineages, through all the things that we are, had questions like we have questions that never were answered. And then we're going to answer them as we get through time. You know, we're great grandma, we're part of grandma, we're part of this. We're, we're all that. We're, you know, imagine why you feel the way you do sometimes and why you feel the way you are. Because there's versions of you just, you're even trying, because you have these other versions trying to communicate to you. And plus, you're trying to communicate to yourself and work through yourself and work through your stuff. Okay? How, how do you do this? Hey, how's that possible? Well, you know, some of you buy into uh, pre preconditions and stuff where you're if my mom had a heart disease then i have heart disease if my family had cancer then i had cancer okay if you buy into that and you believe that then that's your reality that is true but it's true iggy it's true it's been proven okay if that's true then consciousness is also able to be passed along pieces and parts of it through your dna there's pieces and parts in miasms that run through your body there's encrypted code and there's encrypted stuff. So how do we access it? By talking about it, one, being a ceremony, two, and actually doing the work, and three. Now, I'm not saying you have to obsess and do it, but there is, there, you are everything and everyone before you. And everybody who comes after you will be. And if you don't have any kids, then it, with you, you pass on the information that is embedded into somebody else. But that true connection is no longer. It's like having a master uh, recording of something and then there's no, you don't make another one, it's gone. It's only in the universe and it's always recorded and displaced out. So when we talk about the universe, you know, we're, we're talking about different versions and different possibilities. And, you know, the possibility is you to be on the show. This is a decision. This is something that you wanted to gain, something you wanted to learn. Now, is it easy to access? No. But time plays a big factor. Time plays a big, big, big factor in how we access information, how we move through through this existence that we are today. Time is is for a lot of us is just a is a is a, is a measurement on the clock. And I'm here to tell you that that's, that's limited. You know, that's that linear thinking and that we're more than that. Much more than that. But a lot of our brothers and sisters who walk this earth don't believe that. They don't believe that they're more and worthy to be more than they already are. You know, it's education, it's belief, and it's stepping out of our comfort zones. And it's actually making changes that are uncomfortable. And sometimes comfortable we can stay where we're at which is fine you can work through things if you stay where you're at and you can completely walk off the edge and jump and you'll have to figure out things pretty quickly but you have to access access yourself so how do you access points and parts of yourself how do you how do you how, Iggy, how do you get how do you learn how to do something and you want to figure something out now accessing versions of yourself in the inner in the known universe in the unknown universe and getting to know other versions of yourself is knowing where you come from and knowing how you experience the world. First, you have to go back and have to kind of understand what made you who you are today and why you are the way you are. Okay, and I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about everything that came before. I'm talking about the, the view version of yourself, the you version of who is in front of you, who is the person who is watching this, this podcast. Who are you? Have you ever asked yourself? Have you ever asked yourself who you are? As you know, are, are you? Are you? Who are you? Do you remember when you were one? Do you remember when you were two, three, four, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty? Do you remember those dates? But yet we can remember something that just happened last week, and yet we can forget something we forgot what we did last week. But yet we can remember about something we did when we were eight, <clears throat> as clear as day. Why is that? Why, why is that? Why is that possible? Well, there's a lot of there's why there's a lot of ideas about it. There's a lot of reasons. Because we're constantly merging, we're constantly accelerating, we're constantly moving in and out of different 
possibilities of who we are. You know, you ever have that thought where you're going, well, I'm glad I didn't do that. Well, I would have been smashed by a truck or, you know, I would have, man, if I would have been there, I, you know, it's just, it's, it's funny. It's, it's interesting when you start to think about it. Well, first of all, we have to connect with ourselves. And how do you connect with yourself? Remember that tool I told you called the imagination? Okay. And the word I'm going to add with that is called guessing. I want you to guess. And you really need to write this thing, these things down <clears throat> when you start to access different versions of yourself. But we have to relearn who we are, who we believe we are, who we think we are, and how we see ourselves, and how we embrace ourselves, how we talk to ourselves. You literally have to go back to the beginning of conception of yourself and, and write a story and talk to you, talk to yourself and say, hey, hey, Louie. I know you're not born yet. I know you're in there. But I'm just letting you know I'm here. Boy, what just happened? What was that? Did we just create something? Did something just happen? My sheer thought of just thinking that and presenting that to the universe, into my own known universe, changes the facts. Now, this is kind of trippy stuff, okay? Remember, I, I, I was... I was um, a child who was not supposed to be born and my fingers are up okay quotation marks air quotes okay I I was I was one of those people who just was fortunate enough that had parents who were just strong enough and willing enough to make things work when my mom was had appendicitis they had to pull me out of her body inside the you know the what is it the, I can't even think of it I'm inside her womb, okay, and there's that shell that they have, and I, and I can't think. <clears throat> and I can't think because it's just, it's because I'm going back there. I'm going back to that time. The, the, the sack. That's what the sack. And you know, the chances of me being there, being alive today, well, the placenta is the thing that kills, but I'm talking about the amniotic, actually the amniotic fluid that's held inside the mother's sack. I'm inside that sack. Kind of like when they pull babies out of C-section sometimes. Well, they took me out. They pulled me out and they put me in solution, kept me warm. It didn't break. If it breaks, I was done. I was a goner. All right. So, you know, in just now, if you watched what I just did, I said, hey, little Iggy, we just need you to hang on. We need you to, like, stay strong. We're going to go some things right now. And I need you to, like, really be present. I need you to be focused. Did I just send a message to myself from the future to the past? Just, I mean, like right now. Was today the day that I sent that message to a version of myself that has already, that has already happened? Okay, yeah, I think it's already happened, but it's not happened. Okay, because simultaneously everything's happening. All different versions of ourselves is happening simultaneously. And it's interesting because with my, I had I had a conversation with my sister Rosa uh, several years ago, and we were talking about the. There was two of us. There was there was a there was a, a one baby that wasn't formed properly, and, and eventually they had to like take that out of my mom, and then there was me. And then my, my sister always jokes around. She calls it huevito. Huevito means little egg. He's kind of like my little partner, and. With huevito, I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get us some water here before I get into the story. You know, he, um, for years, I didn't realize what I was doing. I didn't realize what was happening. I always felt like I was living two lives. I always felt like I was living a um, different version of what I thought I was living. And I don't know, Rosa, if you want to come on, you can, I can put you, put you through and talk to you. It'd be kind of fun to have Rosa pop on here and share her story of this. But anyhow, I um, I had this, I always had this feeling that I was never alone, that I was always by my, not by myself. Like I always felt like I had this conversation. Well, I'm in the womb of my mother, and then there's also another version, a version of myself, which is actually my twin, who never developed. And Huevito is moving through there, and you know, and I just was living their life and, and kind of carrying on that, the banner for this person. And then, you know, we're at a Starbucks and I'm having this conversation with my sister. And then we finally 
have this breakthrough where we actually just let go of him. We actually let him process and go where he needed to go and be where he needed to be. Letting go of that, of that, you know, that information, that feeling, because he never developed like I developed. But I always knew that there was, there was, and I always say this, that I always feel like, um, that I was different. Like I was, um, I always felt odd. I always felt like the adopted child. I don't know why. I just always felt, I'm the oldest, but I always felt adopted. I always felt like I was, I was, um, a little bit odd, a little bit different than everybody in my family, but that's just, that's just me, period, just the way I think, but I just always felt like the aliens came in and just replaced me for some reason, or just put someone else in there, but that wasn't true. That's just <laughs> my, my imagination, my, my crazy thoughts rolling through my head, but anyhow, Rosa helped me process and let go, and it was able to move into that space that I needed to move in, and um, we, we let Huevito we rest in peace. And I had to thank my sister Rosa for that because she was a huge and big process of that. And Rosa used to be on the show with me for years until she got super busy with her new job and, and her new life. But it was always fun to have her on the show. And if you go back, we're going on 10 years, Rosa, can you believe that? And with Inside Radio, wow, it's amazing. We, we used to do a lot of stuff. So when we, we access versions of ourselves every single day and every single moment, we're accessing versions of ourselves. So it's not abnormal and it's not weird to have these deja vu moments where you're feeling like you're different like you're something's not right something is uh out of character with you that's just normal so basically without giving away too much that's kind of what a uh, parallel universe is just you accessing versions of yourself through the known and unknown galaxies and unknown versions of the universe it sounds complicated it's not complicated. It is complicated. It's not complicated. It's what you make it. So whatever you make it, it will be. So <clears throat> in time, time is just a, a, a relative statement. We've talked about that. We covered that a little bit. Time is that thing that we just, everybody wish they had more of, that we have a lot of, but we don't have enough of, but yet we don't know how to use it. And, and sometimes we, we waste it. So when you're accessing versions of yourself, there's um, there's ways to do it. So we'll, we will do a little a little trip here in a minute, okay? And um, I want you to really think about what you would like, okay, to access, what you would like to gain, what you'd like to learn. And I really legitimately want you to think about this, okay? Right? I really, really want you to say, this is, and you have the right to change your mind, but if there's something that you really are working on, something that you really want to work on about yourself, and something that you really want to access for yourself, and knowledge, information, make it about you. Don't make it so much about anybody else, because it doesn't usually work that way, because that's cross-paralleling universes, and that's a whole different scenario, and that's, you start to violate, <clears throat> you know, the universe, and its codes, and its laws and stuff we don't want to do that okay we really want to work on what's important for you what you need to gain what you need to access in order to get you to that place which you need to learn okay because the universe is your friend the universe is here to help you the universe is something that we're all part of every single one is a part of it okay now I usually don't do this online I usually don't do it on the radio so you get to you get, you get to get um, a little treat okay and you get a little bit insight I want to give you a little bit and then you'll understand why I call this show with insights because with inside of us there's all kinds of insights there's all kinds of information there's all kinds of things that we're constantly need to access constantly uh, sharing okay within us is all the answers that we truly need to know because within us, we have the key to unlock the doors that we believe are locked, okay? So those doors that we believe that are locked and they're not open, okay? We have the ability to unlock those. We have the ability to move through those doors. We're able to lock these doors. We're able to close these doors, open these doors at will, at random, whatever you want to call it. But you gotta, you gotta give yourself a lot of credit. You have to give yourself more credit than you probably get and they probably have gotten 
right? Because, believe it or not, and this is hard for people to digest sometimes and ingest, is life happens not just to you, but to everybody. Okay, it happens to all of us. Every single person is having experiences, memories, and all kinds of things that are happening to them right now. Okay? So, when we make decisions where we want to go, that means we take responsibility when we move into that direction. Now, not all things are going to work out the way we want them to work out. So we have to take responsibility even when things fail. Because when we take responsibility when things don't work out, then no one can no one can ever hurt us. No one can ever go, well, as soon as you tell somebody, yeah, I, I screwed up, what are they going to tell you? Oh, yeah, you screwed up. They're going to be like, oh. But as soon as you tell somebody, ah, it wasn't my fault, I shouldn't. No, they will be the first person. People get a pain. Well, you should have advertised more and you should have done this a little bit more, you know. You take responsibility. You take responsibility for what's happened and what's going on. And I know that's hard for, for people to hear sometimes because when I say take responsibility, that you think, well, what if this happened to me? Well, you know, things happen. It's what we do within that moment. How we move out of that space is what's important. Do we stay in that space? Do we stay in relationships that are not good for us? Do we stay in a job that's not good for us? Do we stay in the traffic and we can take a detour? Do we turn left or do we turn right? Every decision we make is our, our, our choice, our decision, our responsibility. So when you're gonna access this, these, this information here in a little bit, okay, when you're gonna access it, ask yourself, you know, truly, what is, what is it for? Why do you want to access this? Why is this so valuable and so important to you? Why is it you wanna get into this place or in this frame of mind, okay? Is it that you don't have enough in this present moment? Is it that you want to become better and do better? You know, because we have to also give back to the universe when the universe gives us something. You know, we have to acknowledge to the universe, you know, all right, that thank you. I've learned a lot. I want to give back. Now, for some of us, giving back can be a lot of different things. It can be money. It can be ideas. It can be... You know, that's up to you how you're going to do that. I can't tell you what that's going to look like. But when you receive something, you have to give back to it. It's just like when, when you lay on someone's table to get a massage. Okay? They give you the massage, you give them $60. Okay? That's an energy exchange. That's a, the, within that universe of those two people. That's an exchange of energy. Well, the universe works the same way. When you want to access the universe... The universe wants an exchange. It wants, it does not like a void. Why, why do you feel, why, some of you may feel a little bit funny when you receive energy from somebody and then you weren't able to, you know, give, uh, give back. Or thank you sometimes is not enough. And sometimes thank you is enough. All right. It's because the universe says, okay, I gave you a gift. Someone gave you a gift. Someone accessed a gift for you. Okay? Somebody gave you something to you. Okay? And now you have to come back and you have to say, I'm going to give back to someone else, to a dog, a friend, uh, a charity, whatever. You have to have an energy exchange. It's, it's the law of the universe. Because if you don't, it, it gnaws on you. Okay, it gnaws on you. And just like we're on the show, and it's almost it's almost 9 o'clock. We're cruising right along. So think about what you're going to give back. And how you're going to give back. And why you're going to give back. Because the universe wants that. Right? Very simple. It's a form of tithing, I guess. Back to the universe. Tithing in a spiritual way. Tithing in a way that's uh, good for everybody. So think about what you wanted to do, what you wanted to accomplish, something that you wanted to move into, a space you want to move to, because we're getting ready to do the, the meditation now. Okay, the meditation is uh, something that you really need to, you can write it down before you begin. 
I want to learn how the piano. I want to learn how to dance. I want to learn how to skydive. I want to learn. I want to learn how to make a million dollars. I want to learn how to whatever. Blah blah blah. Okay, your story is your story. You know, whatever your story is, you have to use it. You have to work it. Okay, so here we go. I just want everybody to relax. Just sit, sit back. Okay. And remember, this is about you. What you want. How. You, what that looks like. I want you to paint that picture. I want you to use your imagination and I want you to paint that picture. Clear your mind a little bit and open up the possibility. Open up a file in your mind. A space, a folder, a place. I don't know how you work that and what that looks like to you, but you really got to open that up and you really got to present that. And it's got to look like it's something ready to receive. Now for some of us it's probably easier to close our eyes and for some of us it's not. But any time that you want to open your eyes, any time that you want to step outside of this, this, this um, exercise, this meditation, you can. Okay. Any time that you feel like you know you need to come back, come back. Okay. So, I really I'm going to stress this. Make it something that you can tangibly access first. Okay. This is how we start. I don't want it to be too hard. I don't want it to be too too soft. I want it to be kind of in the middle ground. Something that take you a little bit of work. Some, something you really have to look for. Now, I will tell you, when you come back, the messages, you have to, the messages will be, some either for some of you, be very blunt, very to the point. And for some of you, it's going to come in codes. It's going to come in messages. It's going to come in cryptid. It's going to come in, in things that, um, through other people, through um, stories, through pictures, you know, I don't know how the universe works with you, but I do know that the universe gives you these messages constantly, and the universe chooses a format because you seem to understand that format, and you have to kind of be open to the idea that the universe will send you these messages, and you have to go, okay, the universe is going to give me something. And sometimes it's not as literal as turning on your computer. And it might be. But I t guarantee you, I guarantee you this, you will get messages. You will get some pieces and parts. And you'll probably have to go through the process a little bit. You might have to play this message, this portion of the audio again to get you back into, the, into that trance state of mind, that thinking, that clearing, that moving. Okay. You guys ready? Everybody give me a little hands up. Tell me you're ready so we can go. So we can get begin on the journey. Welcome to the journey. Your personal journey. No, I'm not going to talk like that. <laughs> but anyhow. Okay. Now. I need you guys all. Do you like that boys? Welcome to the journey of self-discovery. Ha ha ha. I am here. <laughs> I have another show. But okay. I just need you guys to relax. I really need you guys just to focus. Okay. Everybody just... Find a quiet place, lock the door so you're not interrupted by your dog or your cat or your significant other. So we can go on this journey, we can go far, and we can travel. Here we go. I need you to take a deep breath through your nose. And then exhale. Take another deep breath. And exhale. One more. Next hill. Now I want you to pick a number one through ten. Once you have that number in your mind's eye, that's your return number. Okay, so anytime that you want to open up and return back to the space that you're in, just think of that number. Okay, and it'll bring you back immediately. You can open your eyes and stop. But then getting any time, this is my invitation. I invite you to this space. Second part is, pick a color, any color on the rainbow, any color that has not been seen, any color that you just can fix in your imagination, your eye. Pick that color, hold that color, hold it in your palm, or put it in your heart, put it wherever you need to put it, hold that. That color is important because if you want to stay in the journey, you don't want to leave, but you want to feel a little bit more, a place where you feel a little bit of uh, comfort and protection, look for that color. That'll keep you in the journey and it'll remind you that you're safe, 
and you should already feel safe, you should already feel comfortable, but for some of us who start going on these journeys for the first time, it's nice to see something familiar, and that's what that color is for. And I want you to just relax. I want you to feel your body. I want you to feel your feet to the ground or your back to the bed, wherever you're at, however you're feeling, whatever you're in, whatever frame of mind you're in. Okay. Now, this journey is about finding the peace in the part, okay, of a parallel version of yourself that has the gift and has the information that you want and the information that you want to access the information you want to bring back into this present version of yourself. I just need you to think, I need you to process, and I need you to see and look. <clears throat> and I need you to go into this, in this room, this big white room. I need you to walk, just need you to clear everything out of this room. <clears throat> and just look and see this huge, beautiful room. Now in the middle of this room, there's a chair. Now you can pick what that chair looks like. You can pick that chair, what it feels like, what color it is, how big it is, how small it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I want you to walk towards that chair. Now I want you to go up to that chair. And I want you to move that chair in any direction that you want it to be. Just turn it to the right, turn it to the left, it doesn't matter. If it's right where it needs to be, then leave it alone. Now I need you to sit on the chair, I invite you to the chair, and just sit there and relax for a moment. Now as you're picturing yourself on this chair, I need you to close your eyes as you're sitting in the chair. Just relax. Let your ego just sit there for a moment, just in comfort, and relaxing just feel the chair feel the softness feel the arms the rests hmm. good now I want you to picture in front of you this amazing door now this door can look however you want it to look Okay, this door can be any shape, any size, any color, whatever you want it to be. But there is one thing about this door is around the edges of the door, there's light streaming from it. There's color streaming from it. And this white light and these color light in intermingle and they mix, shining, and it gets more brighter and brighter. And you're looking at this door, we call this a transit door, because we're about to go on a transit trip. We're gonna move into space and time, and time outside of space, outside of time, outside of everything, outside of reality. We're gonna access a parallel version of ourselves. Now I want you to stand up from the chair, walk towards the door, and I want you, before you open the door, I want you to think. Think about what you were going to ask yourself. Think about what you had in mind that you wanted to bring back. The information that you want to be shared with you. From the version of yourself that's on the other side. That has that information. Now I want you to open the door slowly. And I want you to feel the cool breeze that starts to hit your arm your chest, your face, your legs, your body. Now push the door wide open. Now I want you to walk through the door, the transit door. And as you walk through the door, keep in mind of your question. I want you to walk in this room. In this room, it's a little bit darker it's a little bit more gray. It's a little bit more different than the room that you were in before. But as you walk closer and closer, you begin to feel the comfort, the protection. You walk down this corridor. And as you walk down this corridor, I want you to pay attention to the things that are around you and the things behind you, next to you, above you. 
Now you're gonna come up to an opening. And this opening opens up to a beach. And I want you to walk just to the edge of the door where the hallway meets the beach. And I want you to put your toes on the sand. I want you to feel that. And I want you to feel the warmth of the sand and the coarseness of the sand on your toes as you curl them back into your feet. Now take your first steps. Walk. Now walk towards the beach. You're gonna see a fire. Okay, a blue fire. This beautiful blue fire is burning by the beachside. And the waves just miss it. As you're walking towards this blue fire, inside this blue fire is a message that is given to you by the, another version of yourself. A version of yourself that's waiting for you, that's been waiting for you. Now, I need you to walk up to the fire, this blue flame, and I want you to stand right in front. And this flame is cool, it doesn't burn, but it has warmth and it has feeling. And it has knowledge and it has information. Now I want you to step into the fire and it's safe. And then when you step into the fire, you will feel that you're inside of a big, beautiful bubble, a big, beautiful space. From the other side, the other version of yourself with the information starts to come towards you. That version walks towards you. And as you look in awe, just because looking at yourself is kind of a strange thing, besides looking at a mirror, the version comes up to you. You, another version, another parallel, another, another existence of you, another desire, another belief, another incarnation. Now I want you to whisper into the ear of the other version of you what message you have for them. Because they also traveled from the other side of the universe to receive a message from you. Now they will bend over and they'll give you the message that you wanted. Because you both have come across the universe to receive messages from one another. Now however you want to say your goodbyes, your embraces, your bows, it's really up to you. And you both step away, step out of the fire. You step back in the blue flame, go shoot straight up into the sky. As to say, it received your message. It received your call and had given it to you. You turn around, you walk towards the opening of the hallway. You begin to walk through the hallway and you see that, that the hallway is no longer gray. That the hallway is full of multiple colors, multiple possibilities, multiple beliefs, multiple directions. The sky's the limit. You walk towards the transit door. You walk through the transit door. You shut the transit door behind you. The transit door begins to glow again with the bright light around it, with the color shooting outside of it. You walk towards the chair that's sitting in the middle of the white room. You sit in your chair, and as you sit in your chair, you begin to process the information that you requested. As you request the information, as you sit in the chair, it begins to work itself in your mind's eye, in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, and it will manifest in the way that you would like it to be, at the speed you want it to be, and how you want it to be. Now slowly, you come back to the space where you're sitting and the place that you are at, and you begin to 
Remember and feel your body. You take some deep breaths and return back to the space where you were at. You return back to your room, return back to your kitchens, your bedrooms, your car, wherever you're at, return back. Feel your body to the ground, feel your feet to the ground. Clap your hands to get yourself back in the frame of mind. Shake your head side to side. Okay, now you're back. Now you're back, back where you're, wherever you're at, you're back. You've returned. Now whatever your message was, it's for you. You know, you can share or you can move on. You can send me a private message, whatever you want. It'll help you move you through the system. But that message is going to come now. Some of you will get the message immediately tonight. Some of you will process it through dreams. Some of you will process it through um, uh, artistry. Some of you will process it through just spoken words of other people. The universe has its way it does things. Okay. So I, I hope you got something out of that. I hope that you felt something and you got into the place you needed to be. That's a very powerful tool and that's uh, a shorter version of that transit door work where we move you. But I could feel a lot of energy. I could feel a lot of pull and a lot of, you know, people really, you guys are really working through this process and that's good. That's important. So what we're going to do now we're going to move into another space, which we call our intuitive reading session. Okay. We're going to popcorn read and I'm just going to pretty much read an animal card for you and just kind of, kind of feel what the animals are talking to you about. Okay. All right. And I'm glad that you guys don't want to stop and you want to keep hugging. You know what? You don't have to stop. You know, just because I brought you back doesn't mean you have to stop. Okay. You can, you can continue your journeys and now that you know how to move into that, it's even it's it's a tool you that you've been taught a tool you've learned now you can actually move into that space and get back in there and get the information you need all right so awesome and you know be patient that's one key word that I want to tell you I want you to be very patient I want you to be like the bamboo that's growing in the ground I told this story to the drum circle group that I was with on Saturday sometimes we have to fertilize and prepare the soil in front of us okay and for bamboo it takes five years for you to create the soil you have to be creating the soil you have to be uh, manifesting the soil in working the soil to get what you want the result you want now once the bamboo grows it grows rap rapidly fast it grows 90 feet into the air once it starts to grow it grows pretty quickly you know because it's been nurtured it's been cared for now the question you have to ask yourself, okay, the story is this, did it grow 90 feet after it grew or was it growing 90 feet before because it was being nurtured and prepared, okay? So it's a good question. And remember that bamboo didn't grow alone. It also had help. It also had other people who were cognitive and understood that, that sometimes we have to help foster that belief along and work that along. So if you're going to be bamboo, if you're going to be the ground and fertilize it, remember, you might have to ask for help. You may have to ask someone to be there for you, someone to give you the information. It's important. It's important to understand. So when you're ready to bust out of that soil and you're ready to grow 90 feet, you've already grew 90 feet prior to. You're always in preparation to grow 90 feet. That's what it was about. That was the story it was about. All right. Got some cards here. Who wants a reading? Let me know. I'll give you an intuitive pop read real quick. And for those of you who want to go deeper in session with me, you can find me at iggygarcia.com. I do readings. My services and stuff are there. For those of you who want to be able to do some work with me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, do some good stuff and get you into the right frame of mind, get you right back in the places you need to be. So if you want information about me and how to get a hold of me, iggygarcia.com. Okay. And Lily, you want a card? Okay, pick a number one through five. Okay, and, and Tanya, you're next. And then Pam. All right. And here we go. I'm gonna go with Lily since I see if I can see her real quick. Where'd she go?
All right. Okay, here we go. Got a card. All right, I picked for you, Lily. Okay. I picked the dove. The dove is serenity, slow down, pause and breathe. All right, spirit is telling you to pause and breathe. Spirit is saying, hey, you know what? We need to chill a little bit. We just need to sit back and reflect. Look at things a little bit differently. Look at uh, our the realities that we created in the places that we want to move into. Uh, things are coming our way, but they may not come at the speed that we want them to come. And that's normal. And that happens to us a lot. So really just be like the dove. Be gentle. Be soft. Be understanding. Be clear on your message. Be clear how you want to be. Okay, let me scroll back down here real quick and see who's next. Uh, let me see. Okay, Tanya, me, me, me. Pull a card for you, Tanya Cruz. Here we go. And your card is boom. The buffalo. Okay, the buffalo is about abundance. You are a provider for all, in all ways. You're a provider in all ways. Okay, the buffalo is saying that you need to take um, concessions and understanding that you are abundant person. That you are are a powerful place, you're in a powerful uh, moment to make some very powerful decisions, life-changing decisions, some decisions that will help you along, okay? And you're gonna be provided for, that you're gonna take for, when you do the work, when you are in the frame of mind to do it, okay? So these are popcorn reads, so these are really quick, okay? So let's see, Pam Johnson. Shuffle these cards a little bit, see what we got. Giraffe. All right, Pam, you got the giraffe. The giraffe says, uh, Foresight, you are able to see what is in store for the future. Ooh. So, Pam, basically, you have a plan of where you want to go and the things you want to do. There's a couple things that you need to tweak on your plan. There's a couple of things that you have to change a little bit. But you're in the right direction, okay? You're in the right direction. You're in the right frame of mind. Um, just have to be able to do the work. <laughs> this, I guess that's the theme. Do the work. The giraffe is also reminding you to be patient, to make sure you look ahead a little bit. Um, don't over plan, don't overcompensate, but at, have fun in the process. All right, let's see who is next. Uh, I think it's Savannah. Hey, Savannah, how you doing? All right, moving along, moving along. And the card I have here is the horse. The horse says, uh, freedom, you always have a choice. Okay, Savannah, Spirit is saying to be a little bit more open to the possibilities of freedom, to be open to the possibilities of change. Um, some of the things that are in your life right now may not serve you. In the past, you have been able to make those decisions to move out of the space and the things that don't help you. Uh, the horse doesn't give a rat's butt. It just does its thing. It moves on. It doesn't wait for anybody to give it. It doesn't ask for permission. It just does its thing. You gotta be a little bit more freer and make decisions a little more quicker. But it's also a loving animal and it's also a very loyal creature and it's also a creature that is very um, um, very loyal to the person who takes care of it. So there are people who you take care of that may not be loyal to you, but be loyal to you. And that's the question, be loyal to yourself, to your heart, to your spirit. Okay, moving along to Sun, okay, Ali. All right, and I have a card for you, and that card is the swan. Grace, appreciate the beauty inside and all around you. I could say that that's a self-explanatory card, okay, but this card goes deeper than that. This card is reminding you to, that you are a beautiful person, that you have a beautiful heart, okay? But some people may not see that heart. Some people may not understand what they're seeing. Some people may feel that, there's a little bit of confusion when they look at you. Uh, be clear on when you give a message to somebody, be clear on how you present yourself because you can be misunderstood. Not that it's a bad thing. It's sometimes we just, we're just misunderstood. But the beauty inside of you, keep pouring it out, keep sharing it with the world because the world really needs that. And that's what this card's about for you. Okay, let me see, Lori Ann, moving right along. Let's see what we got here. For you shuffling the deck 
All right. You got the antelope. The antelope is decisiveness, make a decision, take uh, appropriate action. Okay, Lori. The antelope says, we don't want to be eaten by the lion, so we want to be moving into spaces and places that are good for us. We are kind of stuck in some energies that aren't helping us and not serving us. In order for us to move in out of that energy, we got to make some serious decisions. We have to have some discernment. We have to move fast. Um, being in a good group of people who love you and support you, this would be a good card to have around it. And surround yourself with the right frame of mind, the right people that will foster and, and, and build the needs inside your heart to move into that space. Okay? All right, Terry, let's see what we got for you. All right, and I got the fox. Terry, I got the fox. It says that that ability adapt to the changes that are happening. Okay, this is just a reminder, okay, that sometimes you have your fox medicine on, so you're hiding from people and you're hiding from the world sometimes. Not all the time, just sometimes. But it, it just reminds you in order to adapt, but don't give yourself away. Adapt, but don't give yourself away. Because it's easy to adapt and give ourselves away. Find your personality within the adaptability of what you're trying to find. So Fox is saying, have fun, be playful, adapt, create healthy limits and boundaries, and don't give yourself away. All right, let's see who else. I know we got a bunch of people say, and then, okay, now we read your cards there. Let's see, Corbin, I'll give an overall read here in a second, I believe. I think well, that's it. All right, so we're going to give an overall read. Okay, I'm going to pull the card for the whole group. And this will be something that we can all use. Even me, because I need it. Shuffle these cards really good. <clears throat> all right, here we go. We got the Lynx. All right, the Lynx says, discernment, look beyond intimate appearances. Okay. So the links is saying is, let's use discernment. Let's let's be let's be a little bit more. Let's use this with this with our hot head and our heart. Bring them together, okay. Being able to share and discern what's good for us and the people around us, and create healthy limits and boundaries. Because remember, the links is one of those creatures that you know is it's sometimes you can see them and sometimes you can't, and they're very well hidden, and it doesn't come out when it doesn't need to come out. It comes out when it needs to do something very important, very powerful, very magical. Kind of like you. Do the work, do what you're supposed to do, and don't worry about what other people are, are thinking or other people are saying. Just keep doing what you need to do. Be like that bamboo, okay? Like the story of the bamboo. Just keep processing, keep working. All right, and let's see if I missed anybody, and I think, I think that's everybody on the reads. If I'm not mistaken. I think so. Got everybody. All right. So those are the reads for tonight. And I want to give you guys a little bit of sh uh, information what's happening this week. So for those of you who want to hang out and do stuff with all the people who we all hang out with. Let's see. So we got an event coming up this week and that event is the the gathering of sounds and that's going to be at Whetstone Park and um, let's see that will be at 7 p.m. for those of you who like to come at Whetstone we'll be doing a gathering of sounds basically we'll be using singing bowls uh, crystals um, tuning forks all those cool things in order to harmonize and bring back our energy let go release heal and bring back all that stuff we need so for gathering of sounds that will be at whetstone park by the casting pond for those of you who want to be there and for those of you who want to go a little deeper in learning and go into a little bit more about shamanism i have an introduction to shamanism that is this sunday at 3 p.m okay here in columbus ohio that's 3 p.m to 6 p.m okay, that's an introduction to urban improving shamanism that is going to be at the Innate uh, Massage Therapy um, location, which is 870 High Street, Suit 19, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. Okay, for those of you who want to learn more about shamanism and get deeper into it, I'm taking students for the first time in a while. So for those of you who want to learn 
under um, you know, the teachings that I have been taught. This is a good opportunity. It's not open all the time. I don't just do this all the time. So if this is something you want to do, something that's called to you, something that you know that resonates with you, and you want to learn a little bit more about your your calling into uh, spirituality and your calling into uh, shamanism, um, get a hold of me. Okay, and there is an event page on Facebook for those of you who are friends with me. So, with that, that pretty much wraps up the day, wraps up the night. And I uh, hope you guys got what you needed and got the messages that you had to carry and move through. Papi Gino, I love you. I miss you. I can see you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad. I hope you're enjoying Peru. My my dad's in Peru. He's hanging out there with family members. He actually listened to my show. <laughs> he had He had nothing to do <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. That's my good dad. And my sister was on, so I appreciate her being on too, and all everybody else who was on. All right, guys, that's about it. That's a wrap. So if you like this show, uh, leave me a message here on this, this chat forum, this podcast, or put something on my wall. Let me know. Send me a message if you got uh, a good message tonight and you need to help to process through it through the through the meditation we did. Okay. You, you're awesome sauce too, though. Okay, so I'm not, I'm only awesome sauce because you're awesome sauce. I love you guys very much. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. I hope you like what we're doing. I'll sign up to um, my newsletter on iggygarcia.com with insights.com. They all kind of come together. So you guys be well. Take care. Be good. And I'll see you guys later. And uh, bueno, bueno, much love. Peace and love. Raise the vibration. Vibrate in that energy that's good for the world. See you guys next time. Which will probably be next week. And for those of you who want to go to Peru, let me know because I'm putting together a tour this time. Alright, love you guys. Too.